To that top story, the Democratic Republic of Congo's Electoral Commission has published the provisional results of the presidential election declaring incumbent Felix Antoine Tshisekedi the winner. But the opposition is calling it an electoral coup d'etat and is urging the population to protest the results. Zanem Nati Zaidi reports. Candidat numéro 20, Tshisekedi Chilombo Felix Antoine, candidat indépendant, avec 13 millions 215 000 366. Ahead of his challenges, Moïse Katumbi and Martin Fayulu, President Chisekedi was provisionally proclaimed president of the DRC for a second term by Deni Kadima, the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission. He says that according to Article 2, candidate number 20, Mr. Felix Anton Chisekedi, is provisionally elected. He obtained 13,215,366 of the valid voters cast, representing a percentage of 73.34%. Opponent Martin Fayulu, who came third with 5% behind Moise Katumbi's 18%, was quick to react to the announcement of the results, which he rejected outright and called on all Congolese to protest. He says that Kadima, the chairman of the Electoral Commission, has just crossed a red line. He says he rejects in full what he calls the sham elections and the farcical results of the commission. He calls on the Congolese people to protest against what he says is an electoral coup d'etat executed for the benefit of Felix Antoine Tshisekedi. According to social political analyst Kubutunu Patrice, the opposition should find other ways of contesting the results rather than calling for demonstrations. He says he believes that the opposition's appeal is not likely to be heeded by the same people who massively elected Felix Antoine Tshisekedi. The opposition must find other mechanisms that can also help consolidate national cohesion after the vote. Tshisekedi is provisionally elected president of the Democratic Republic of Congo for the next five years pending final confirmation by the Constitutional Court on January 10th. For VOE Africa, I'm Zanem Neti Zaidi. Since 1996, conflict in the eastern DRC has led to approximately 6 million deaths. Clashes by militant groups in the east and neighboring Rwanda's alleged involvement have contributed to deadly conflicts. One of the most prominent rebel groups fighting in the East is the March 23 movement, M23, made up primarily of ethnic Tutsis. Over the years, evidence of Rwanda's support for M23 has caused lasting damage to the Kigali-Kinshasa relationship. In the current election, incumbent President Felix Antoine Tshisekedi has come out forcefully condemning the Rwandan president Paul Kagame for allegedly backing M23. And according to our reporter in Goma, Sabiti Jafar al Katanti, Kagame's victims, citizens of eastern Congo, those living in North Kivu province and the city of Goma, have rewarded Tshisekedi with their votes. Here in Goma, President Tshisekedi became very popular since he changed his uh, talks against Kagame and people of Goma took President Tshisekedi as their candidate, the one who will uh, bring change and security since President Tshisekedi uh, started to uh, attack Kagame in all his speech. And here in Goma, yesterday uh, evening was celebrating day because everywhere in all streets, people were singing on uh, this Tshisekedi's victory. So, Jafar, you would think Katumbi would have been uh, more popular over in the in the east and southeast uh, because uh, that area is Katumbi's stronghold, yet he came with only 18% of the vote. So this shift to Tshisekedi has all to do with Kagame? Congo is so big, yes. The southeast belongs to Katumbi, that's true. But not all the Eastern Congo, because from Goma where I am to uh, Lubumbashi, which is uh, the 
Katumbi headquarters is around 1,800 kilometers. So people in here are not linked to people in Lubumbashi. So Goma was an open city for all of them, and Chisekedi took it via his speech. But we can't, uh, we can't say Katumbi didn't get voices in it, uh, in South Kivu especially. In the South, South Kivu, many people voted for Katumbi because I was there uh, some days before election. They were saying, we'll vote for Katumbi because President Sisekedi didn't anything during these five years in that zone. He didn't arrive there and he didn't do any project. So uh, in the east of DRC, we know that Katumbi is uh, the most popular, but Goma and some parts of North Kivu because of the war against M23. So Jafar, in the mineral rich area where you are, there were fears of post-election tension and violence. So as far as you're concerned, you're there. Uh, how's the security? How's the situation there? It's really quiet. Uh, since yesterday to now, there is nothing. And before the pronunciation of the result, I saw soldiers and policemen in all cross forks, in all roundabouts of Goma, but they left after some minutes uh, after saying that people are quiet. And it's really because many people uh, liked Chisakedi to win it, and Chisakedi won. That was reporter Sabiti Jafar al Katanti speaking with me from Goma. At least four suspected extremist attacks in Burkina Faso have killed dozens of soldiers and civilians in a week. Local sources told the French news agency AFP that the attacks have targeted military contingents in the rest of North. A South African police spokesperson says flash floods killed 21 people in the small town of Lady Smith in KwaZulu Natal province. The Associated Press says the floods hit the town on Christmas Day, destroying about 1,400 homes, with the death toll expected to rise as an unconfirmed number of people are still missing. Ethiopia and the self-declared Republic of Somaliland have signed a historic initial agreement that will allow landlocked Ethiopia to have access to the Red Sea, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's office announced Monday. The announcement was made in Addis Ababa, where Somaliland President Mosebihi Abdil is visiting. According to Ethiopia, Ahmed and Abdil signed the Memorandum of Understanding or MOU for the partnership in the Ethiopian capital. It said, the Memorandum of Understanding is intended to serve as a framework for the multi-sectoral partnership between the two sides. The Memorandum of Understanding shall pave the way to realize the aspiration of Ethiopia to secure access to the sea and diversify its access to, to sea ports said a statement issued by Ahmedi's office. It also strengthens their security, economic and political partnership. Furthermore, the Memorandum of Understanding also indicates the pathway bolster their political and diplomatic relations, the statement said. Abdi arrived in Addis Ababa on Sunday and was welcomed by the Mek Mekonem. Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister. The office of the spokesperson of Somaliland's president posted a purported recording of Abdi saying that Somaliland has agreed to lease 20 kilometers of coastline along the Red Sea in Somaliland to Ethiopia without specifying the location of the piece of land. Abdi said Ethiopia will have a Malin force base on the leased land. In return, the recording claims Ethiopia will officially recognize Somaliland once the final deal is signed. He did not say when the deal will be signed. Voyeur Somalia has not verified 
the authenticity of the recording. The Prime Minister of Ethiopia has requested from us to enter an understanding for their military to have a base on the sea as they have a Malian force, Abdi is heard saying in the recording.